This is the VPAD A1. Uh, it's a multi-parameter simulator. It's our, uh, our competitive product to the Fluke ProSim 8. It has a number of advantages uh, that we feel are, are quite uh, interesting. The first being that there is a control unit that goes together with a handheld tablet uh, to allow you to control all of the modules at the same time. The unit itself consists of the control unit, a multi-parameter simulator, and this is equivalent to the A1. So it provides the ECG outputs, um, temperature, cardiac output, invasive blood pressures. The other module is the SpO2 module. It connects to the uh, interface unit and provides uh, the interface to the finger probe of the SpO2 uh, pulse oximeter. The third module is the NIVP simulator module, which is here. It has a built-in pressure pump. Uh, it senses the, the pressures and it generates the pulses necessary to simulate the, the different SpO2 uh, simulations that are required. It also allows you to do uh, static pressure testing, air leakage testing for the NIVP unit itself, and some other small additional pressure tests. The unit is a, a modular system, so the unit snaps together. Snaps together. So you've got the complete unit. I'm going to turn it like this. So you've got all the, the access to all the different connections that you need here. You can also expand the unit. This is the DACOM bus, so this allows you to connect to the VPAD ES safety analyzer or uh, potentially other devices in the VPAD line. This is the IBP SPO2 power connection there. And then the NIVP hose connects up to the input here. So when it's in operation, you use the, the tablet to control the device. You can make changes um, to a number of the different parameters. ECG is the first, respiration, temperature and cardiac output, invasive blood pressure, SpO2, and NIVP. The system works on the basis of uh, auto sequences and auto settings. So auto sequences are a series of auto settings from each of the different uh, parameters that you've got in the system. So for instance, if you went to ECG, you can simulate a number of uh, types of waveforms, such as normal sinus rhythm, arrhythmias, pacer pulses, uh, fetal ECG signals, performance waveforms, and others, uh, just by simply selecting the value. So if we go to normal sinus rhythm, you can adjust the axis that you're going to look at, you can adjust the amplitude, the rate, artifacts, and whether you're in adult or neonatal mode. And once you've made a series of settings for this particular ECG simulation, you can then save them as an auto setting. Simply going into the edit mode, it gives you a summary of what the settings are and then you can give it a file name so that you can recover that later on whenever you're doing setups. When you're doing a test, in this particular mode, the way it sits right now, it would be creating an ECG waveform uh, on the monitor. Uh, you can read what the monitor is saying and then press the result button and it will give you the opportunity to record the results. If you can change the, the output or the result information, um, it's shown in a dark blue color. So for instance, we've set the amplitude at 1 millivolt, but maybe we're getting 1.5 millivolts uh, as part of the, the result. So you could go in and you could change that. 
So that would be the result, and we can say that that's a pass or a fail. I'm going to say it's a fail, and if I view the results, then I can see what the, uh, the information is uh, for that particular test. An auto sequence is a series of uh, no, numerous auto settings. You can set it up so that there is uh, one group of settings for ECG respiration, IBP for instance, and then uh, once that test has been done, it will go on to the next in sequence until it's completed the complete auto sequence. Once we've set up the different auto settings for each of the different parameters, we can choose an auto sequence and we can create one from scratch or we can edit an existing one. So you see here this one with uh, two groups of auto settings. In the first one we have an ECG arrhythmia. We could also add to that respiration. And so now you've got uh, two settings in that particular group. So when you run a test you will go through each of the groups, generate a test result, and then you will save the information into a file when you're completed. In the settings, you can also monitor what you're doing, uh, but the key part here is you can do your own calibration and setting up of SpO2 curves or NIBP um, uh, O curves. In SpO2, for instance, uh, here you can choose uh, different manufacturers so for instance we could choose a Massimo and then there's only one particular Massimo model so we can go from there but here we've got your SpO2 values, your rates and your amplitude. Um, you can see these these buttons are, are quite comprehensive. You can do a number of different things. Uh, if you wanted to uh, go through a table, um, this is your own preset table, you can create whatever values you want in this table. Uh, the one that's currently selected is the one with the orange bar on it. If I choose a different one, it'll go back and it'll set that value here. Now you can either go through the table by uh, going into the table and selecting the value like I just showed you, or you can use the up and down arrows here to go through the presets, or you can actually go down one at a time or up one at a time by using the plus and minus keys. So those are, are common controls in the system and it allows you to move around and make selections very easily. Um, in NIBP, I mentioned there's a, a number of different things. You've got NIBP simulations. You can do leakage rate tests, overpressure tests, and just basic pressure tests in a uh, automated mode, in a step mode, increasing or decreasing, um, or you can do a, a manual pressure test. And from any of these you can start the test, get the result, store the result, and then generate a test report file in the end.